Hello everyone, Miss April here at Kearney Public Library with another online watercolor Wednesday edition. Today we are going to be painting a night scene and I'm going to talk a little bit about the supplies before we get started. With the watercolor paper that you're going to be using, you're going to want to look and make sure that it's at least 140 pounds. When you do this, it makes sure that your paper doesn't get wrinkled and warped. Um, and sometimes it kind of buckles if it's a lighter weight paper. So um, good watercolor paper is important for this project because we're going to be using a little bit more water with the paint. I also have painter's tape. You can use masking tape, but you aren't going to want to use like scotch tape or duct tape. Um, something that's in that middle range is what's going to come off your paper, but not while you're painting. So the painter's tape is very good. I have tube paint in several different colors. I have my watercolor palette again. Um, Q-tips if you like using those opposed to paint brushes or if maybe you don't have that at home. I've got a paint palette, water and paper towels. Um, we're going to be using an old toothbrush. Make sure you've got, if you've got toothpaste in it, clean it out really good. I just found a cheap 50 cent one at the store. Um, I have a wider flat brush and I have an eight inch round brush. I also have a Sharpie marker. Sometimes I like to add detail with my stuff when I'm finished. Um, so those should be the supplies that you need. I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. I'm going to do it in steps. So I will be changing uh, my images here as I go. That's just because you're gonna want all of your items to dry before you paint on the next layer. So I'll go ahead and I will start by showing you how to tape your paper to your, um, your pad. Okay, to start out, you're gonna wanna tape your paper to some kind of a surface that'll keep it stable. I just used an old back from a sketch pad you can use maybe a piece of cardboard or if you have a small board laying around. And the reason I'm taping this down is just to kind of keep it from warping too much. I'm gonna tape all four sides. Some artists like to prep their watercolor paper before they start painting by putting a wash of water on the paper and then taping it down. I've just always done it this way where I tape it down and then I start painting. Um, so it's just personal preference. Okay, so once we've got this taped down, you should be good to start painting. One thing I will mention right now before we get started, when your painting is done, usually I let my work set for 24 hours just so that I know the paint is dry. Um, I'll notice if there's any warping, but when you go to take this painter's tape off, you're going to want to pull away from your artwork. Um, sometimes when that paper gets damp, it will tear into your painting and that's not a good thing if you really like what you have done. The first step is painting the background sky. I'm going to use my flat brush and you have the option of using palette paints like this or excuse me, yeah, palette paints there and tube paint. I kind of used a combination of both so you can get an idea. If you want to use palette paints, you can just take maybe an old Tupperware container and mix up the shades that you like. But I used some purples and blues. I didn't want the night sky to be completely dark, uh, just so that some of those trees and stuff that I'm gonna add will still show up. So the way I'm painting it, I'm just making X's. And you can keep adding water and paint. I'm working from dark to light. And I can actually take my brush into the water and keep carrying that color down. And you can go back up into your darker if you missed some spots. 
And then if I decide, you know what, I want it a little bit darker in there, I'm gonna take some of the pure pigment there and I'm just gonna brush it right into it. You can get some really pretty colors that way. I like to see the brush strokes when I paint a sky. If you'd prefer a softer or smoother look, you can try using Q-tips. And then I'm gonna put blue. I kinda wanna have that same purpley blue color. So I'm just gonna combine the two. My paint's a little bit dry, so I'm adding water to it so I can blend. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It's okay if your color from the other side kind of mixes in with it. And really you can choose any color that you like. Add a little more of that blue to it. And then you can kind of go in and make that same X pattern through the middle to blend your colors. So then you've got your background done. And like I said, I'm going to be showing step by step what you're doing but you're gonna to wanna to let this dry, otherwise anything you put on top of it is gonna bleed. So I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry and go on to the next step. So here I've got my background painted and I want to make stars. So that's where you'll use your toothbrush and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet the bristles and kind of tap it out. You don't wanna have too much water on there because it'll glob. It'll leave big, messy marks on your paper. So I've got that and the paint's pretty thick in there. I put a plastic bag behind it because it does splatter, but you're just gonna do it like you would spray. Like you're cleaning out the toothbrush bristles. And here's where some of those dark, vibrant colors look really good because it makes that white surface pop. And you can put as much or as little as you want. So that's gonna be your next step. You're gonna wanna let that dry a little bit. This shouldn't take too long to dry though. And you can set that aside. So here I have a dry one with all of my stars speckled on there. And the next step, I'm actually gonna use my eight inch brush. And what I wanna do is paint more of like a silhouette or trees that kind of fade into the background that are further away. And I'm just gonna use opposite colors. On the, the pink, pinkish red looking side, I'm gonna paint more of a blue. And then on the blue side, I'm gonna paint more of like a purplish red. I do want to dilute the paint a little bit more on this one just because I want it to look lighter. I'm going to start from the top and I'm just making lines. So you kind of see the shape of a tree in the background. And if you get too much paint or too much water, just go ahead and blot over it. Or even if your colors are too dark, you can kind of just touch it with the paper towel to soften it. Okay, so I'm gonna do kind of a purplish red on the opposite side. I'm gonna dilute that again. And 
And then you can always go back in and add more if you take away too much. And I'm going to put one right in the middle just to break up that sky a little bit. We were talking about Bob Ross paintings and how he likes to put trees in everything. They really do add a nice quality to a lot of paintings. So again, I'm using a matted version or a lighter version of my colors. And you don't have to paint them as lines. There are a lot of different ways you can paint trees. So I've got my silhouettes. I'm going to let this one dry again. Move on to the next step. Here is one with my silhouettes where they're dry. And I'm going to go in and paint darker trees where they're closer to where you're at. They're more in the, the front view. So this this has a little bit of perspective. You could use solid black, but I'm actually going to go in and add some grasses, some tall grasses in the very front. So I'm going to use darker um, blues and purples and that type. And again, I'm just doing the same thing where I'm making my lines. I'm going to fill these out a little bit more since they're in the front. And you can even mix blues. I might take a little bit of this lighter blue and put it in there. And as you practice, you'll get used to how much water you're adding to your paint. Sometimes it feels a little bit tricky at first, but that's all right. Okay, so I'm gonna paint one more on the other side. Do more of a purple color. And with this one, I'm gonna take just a little bit different shape. I'm just flicking my brush outward to get those leaf patterns. I want my colors to be darker than the ones that are in the, the background here, just so that we know that this is closer. is fun to play around with the different colors that you can mix up. You know, maybe you like reds and oranges better. You don't feel like you have to stick to a color palette that I'm using. I'm going with some more blue too. Okay, so that takes care of the next step. We're going to let this dry. You'll probably notice I have different colors on some of these panels. It's because I was kind of playing around at home and selecting different things. So here's where I'm going to start adding in those grasses. And I'm actually going to use the paint palette. I didn't have a tube of black, so I'm just going to use this. And like I said, this has some pretty purples and reds and blues. If I wanted to, I could just take a small plastic container and mix my own colors right from the palettes. Get that damp. I 
and I'm just going to use that same flicking motion where it's heavier here and you lighten how you're holding the brush on the way out, on that brush stroke out. You can practice on scratch paper if you like. But it just adds another element to the painting. I'm just going to kind of fill in those corners on that bottom edge. All right, so you can let this dry and you can either leave it like this or I used a Sharpie marker. A lot of my colors were very dark in here and I had a little bit of trouble seeing the grasses in the front. So I took a Sharpie marker and I just kind of started drawing some of my edges and it gives it a nice coppery sheen. I don't know if you can see that on film, but it just kind of brightens it and helps it stand out. And when the light hits it, you can really see where those grasses are in the front area. So that is how you paint a night scene.